I'm Rick Kayla. Thanks for joining me. If you consult an attorney or a doctor, you don't have to ask whether their advice is intended to serve your best interests. It's understood that the professional has a responsibility to put your welfare first. But there's no such understanding when it comes to financial services. Some financial advisors have a fiduciary duty requiring them to act in your best interest, but others do not. Even more confusing, the same professional can have a fiduciary duty part of the time and be held to no such standard at other times. It is hard for consumers to know the difference. Last week I promised a five-minute solution to clear up this confusion. Here it is. Before engaging any financial advisor, say that you require him or her to be a fiduciary. Ask the advisor to sign a written statement that he or she is a fiduciary, that you are the client, and that either the advisor receives no income from commissions or any commission income is trivial. And I would suggest that trivial is clearly defined. If the advisor signs uh, such a statement, you can be assured they have a fiduciary duty to you as a client. If not, you then understand that you're a customer. And caveat emptor, which is buyer beware, is in full play. Now for a little background on why the confusion exists. It comes largely because of the influence that large financial institutions who earn revenue through the sale of financial products have on legislators. For example, the Investment Advisors Act of 1940 requires that anyone giving investment advice must be acting in a fiduciary capacity. The intent was to separate the financial salespeople who had a significant conflict of interest from the investment advisors who had few to none. If you know very little about financial products, would you rather be educated as the customer of a commissioned salesperson or the client of a fee-for-service advisor? Well, hands down, you want the fee-for-service advisor. You want to be a client. Of course, the financial institution selling products understood this. They were able to influence the drafting of the 1940 Investment Advisors Act to exclude any broker or dealer whose performance of such advisory services is solely incidental to the conduct of his business as a broker or dealer. What that means is if salespeople just happen to give some financial advice that's incidental to the sale of their financial product, they and their companies are not held to the fiduciary standard. Congress also allows financial companies to advertise as if they're fiduciaries, while their sales forces are not held to a fiduciary standard. The same conflict arises in some professional designations like the Certified Financial Planner designation, or CFP, conferred by the CFP Board. The designation certified the completion of training in financial planning originally. But in about 2008, the Board added a fiduciary requirement to the designation. However, the CFPs are only held to a fiduciary requirement when they're doing what the CFP Board defines as financial planning. If a CFP professional is giving advice to a client, the fiduciary standard applies. Yet the same professional can sell the same client an annuity with high fees and high commissions, even if the product may not be in the client's best interest, as long as no financial planning is part of the transaction. The result is significant confusion for consumers. Here's the bottom line. When you look for financial advice or financial products, don't assume the advisor is looking out for you. It's your responsibility to find out 
whether any financial professional owes you a fiduciary duty. I suggest you ask directly, am I a customer or a client? The answer is almost always, well, you're a client. As most financial service salespeople honestly don't know the difference. After you explain that difference, ask them to verify their fiduciary duty in writing. Your financial well-being may depend on that five-minute solution. Thanks for listening.